The next guest is a good friend of mine. I've kind of made him into a cult figure. He's seen all around Arizona, and he's also going to be traveling around um, California in the next few weeks. Please welcome Mike Sterner. Thank you. I'd like to do uh, my impression of Astro, the dog from the Jetsons, singing Me and Bobby McGee. <laughs> Rusted rat and rotten rouge, waiting for a train, reeling just as rated as my earrings. Robbie River weaseled out, rusted for a ring, brought us all to rage. Jane, stop this crazy thing! <laughs> Because my, the way my mom explained to me, I was uh, born under protest. <laughs> Some kind of labor dispute. <laughs> but my mom and dad live out at Sun City, you should know this. Uh, at the edge of Sun City, there's a sign that says, Welcome to Sun City, population, and then there's a little digital readout. <laughs> the only place I know where you got to take a census every day. But uh, I was out there playing golf out there, and it's kind of nice golf courses out there. It's kind of difficult that they got all these huge white stones sticking up in the middle of them. The holes got little plastic flowers in them. But, uh, so I was out there and I'm driving back. It's kind of late. Everyone's asleep. It's about 9:15. And uh, driving back, I got the remote control for my TV set, and I'm opening people's garage doors, you know, not really paying attention to where I'm going. And all of a sudden, this old lady whips out in the street in front of me. Okay, this old lady with a toy poodle in a wheelchair. Well, let me explain. The uh, the old lady was in the wheelchair, not the toy poodle. The toy poodle had this little walker. <laughs> And they whipped right down the street in front of me, you know, there's like a crosswalk and a stop sign, so they assume they can go whenever they want. And, I don't know, I freaked out. I couldn't remember where the brakes were, and I kind of bumped her a little bit. Knocked her over. Well, she wasn't hurt, but I totaled her dog. <laughs> and, uh, she got really pissed off. She called the police. So the Sun City Police Force comes out. It's just one guy, you know, like a golf cart with a little light on top. This guy's a real wimp. He doesn't have a, a, a gun on his belt. He's got a thermos. <laughs> and hauls me in, throws me in the Sun City Slammer, which is like this tin garden shed with a padlock on it. These are litter bugs, and anyone under 30, they just toss them right in there. So the next day I had to go up in front of the Sun City court system. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. The Sun City judge gave me, he gave me life imprisonment. <laughs> a life sentence in Sun City, which is only like five years anyway. <laughs> so it's no big deal. <laughs> well, I'd like to end with a, my impression of a crossing guard. <laughs> This is it. <laughs> what I like to do is dress up like this, like a crossing guard, go down to the school crossing, and then knock out the real crossing guard, okay? And then stand on the opposite side of the street from where the little kids are, and do this. Go for it! Run! <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Thank you. You're doing a bad thing. We're here with Mike Sterner, and Mike, you were on one of our other shows, and you showed one of your films that you're an avid filmmaker. I um, make avid films. Well, could you tell uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, you've got about three or four hours worth of comedy, you've been doing it for a long time, it's not that you're just starting out. I've been, I've been doing it for about four years, yeah, most of it sucks though, three or four hours, and there's like some stuff that works okay, and some stuff that only like students will laugh at. Oh yeah, I brought you a present, Joel, I brought you this. Uh, Mr. T cereal, huh? Mr. T cereal. Is it from Quakers? I've never heard of this before. It says, eat it or I'll kill you. <laughs> Let's go on to the serious side of you, okay? This is a serious this side. Is a, yeah, this is the truth. Actually, during the day, you do work as a busboy. I don't know if you're not aware. You, you resigned from the backstage yeah, I here. had to give it up. I was working here. This is a great place, and I love it a lot, but... Uh, you're going on to bigger and better things. I got tired of... I got tired of, you know, working my butt off for uh, 25 cent tips. You know? No, I'm just kidding. That's someone else's material. That's someone else's material. Yeah. So you've been working a lot of the clubs around. You had a big write-up in uh, City Light. Cut that later, Kevin. Yeah. So, Mike, what's on your future agenda? Uh, well, I am going to California for like a week, but uh, it's no big deal. I just hope to make some connections there. And I want to go to Texas and... Uh, and uh, I want to make you, some money. You won the Catch a Rising Star thing that, that said, go to New York. The same thing that, that he won here in, Michael in Bailey. Phoenix. Michael Bailey won. I won in Tucson at the U of A. So and you used to run Comedy Corner? The well, show down there at the U of A. It's a really great show. If you're ever in Tucson on a Friday at noon, you see it. It's just in the cellar. 
So you've attracted quite a cult following, like I said before. A lot of people. <laughs> Everybody in the audience are fans of yours. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing some new material. You constantly are changing, and I think you've got a lot of talent. You're one of the best. Wish you all the luck in the world. Thanks, Joel. Michael Sterner. We'll be back right after this. Hey, Fozzie. Mm -hmm. Never think about those things we take for granted. You mean like fish hooks? No, no, I mean stuff we can't live without, like clean water. Come on, if clean water is so important, then why do people waste it and pollute our rivers and streams? Uh, I don't know. Maybe we just don't think about it. But you know what? We should. Mm -hmm. For some free tips on how you can use water wisely, write to Kermit, National Wildlife Federation, Washington, D.C., 20036. Who are you talking to? Hmm? For the past 35 years, one organization has been continuously protecting our freedom and preserving our peace. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO. But peace and freedom are not always easy to preserve. Yet for the past 35 years, NATO has succeeded in helping to prevent Europe from going up in flames.